congratulations to Brother Louis Marie, to the Peck family, and to all of our religious, because we have another member of our family professing vows. I think it's significant that we have this ceremony on the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows, because when we think of Our Lady's deep sorrows, the swords that pierced her heart, as Simeon had prophesied during the Passion of the Son, we ask ourselves the question, why was it the will of God that she should suffer so much? She who was so sinless, innocent, and pure, and it certainly had no least fault of her own to expiate. Why should she have had to suffer so deeply? Well, the fathers of the church tell us that God in his wisdom deigned that she should be so closely associated with the passion of her son that she is called the co redemptress that she willingly offered her sorrows to Almighty God in union with the passion and death of her divine son for our redemption, for our salvation. And so she became our mother, particularly on Calvary. So I said it was significant because in many ways, the religious life is a life of the cross. Of course, we all have crosses. But as religious, we can identify with Our Lady in her sorrows, in her heavy cross that she carried. Sometimes the religious life is a life of great joy. There are those deep joys, but then there are also those trials, periods of spiritual blindness, and so forth. And so we can identify in that way with our Blessed Mother. But the religious life is also unique in that religious are like the Twelve Apostles. When you think of the Twelve Apostles, they were, in a sense, our Lord's family. They traveled with Him, they heard all of the words from His blessed lips, they witnessed His miracles, and He even said to them, and to them at the Last Supper, I have not called you servants, but I call you friends. So religious are members of our Lord's family, we could say. Now, there would be no religious life if there were no vows. And the reason for that is the religious life is a state of perfection. That means that those who enter the religious life, or remain in it, take vows, impose upon themselves the obligation of striving for perfection. Anyone can observe the evangelical counsels of poverty, chastity, and obedience, and they are called that counsels because they are not mandatory. In particular, when our Lord and St. Paul referred to celibacy, the words were used, let him take it who can take it. So it's not an obligation, but it's a counsel. Poverty, chastity, obedience, the evangelical counsels. But a religious binds himself to live these counsels. Everyone should strive to live them according to his state of mind. But religious in particular bind themselves. In fact, that's where we get the word religious, coming from the Latin verb religare, which means to bind. So religious are binding themselves by professing vows to a life of observing the evangelical counsels. And St. Thomas Aquinas <laughs> speaks about the excellence of the religious state, and he says, supposing you had a fruit tree, and out of your goodness and charity, you gave somebody the fruit from your tree, would it not be a greater gift and a greater sacrifice if you gave someone the tree, and the ground on which you planted, you <coughs> gave that person the tree, and, and again, the ground on which is planted as his or hers for the rest of their lives. That would be getting more than just getting the fruit from the tree. And so St. Thomas uses that simple example to describe what we do by professing vows. We are giving God everything we can. Professing vows is an act of the virtue of religion, the worship of God, so that whatever we do throughout the day, which is all done in the spirit of obedience, 
becomes an act of worship of God, an act of religion. So the vows sanctify all that we do. And I want to take a few minutes to speak briefly about the excellence of the brotherhood. This is especially a wonderful occasion because we have another religious brother. Now you know that priests are hard to come by in this age of the church, and brothers even more so. Maybe not enough young men look upon this as such a beautiful way of life. Because brothers, like priests, like religious priests, take the same vows. They have the same state of perfection for the religious life, but they do not have the serious obligations that a priest takes upon himself by being ordained. They are able to, they're more free to help priests with maybe some mundane things. There's so many different tasks that religious brothers can perform. There are teaching brothers. There are brothers who work in a church, building a church or a sacristy, mechanics, that do all kinds of things. But brothers lighten the load of priests so that they can devote more time to the important duties of the priesthood. And brothers also provide us the common life. We have some priests, some religious priests, who live alone. Of necessity, they're out somewhere in the rectory, living by themselves, serving the parish. And wouldn't it be wonderful if we had enough brothers, that there could be a brother with every priest, so that he would have someone to pray with, someone to share a common life with. So there are so many beautiful facets of the brotherhood. It should never be looked down upon, oh, he's only a brother, he's not a priest. The priesthood is for those men who are called to it. But every man who desires it can choose the brotherhood and pray for the grace to persevere in that excellent state of perfection, living the vows. So it is a happy occasion, and we should all pray for Brother Louis Marie's perseverance. And I especially congratulate the members of the Peck family. And I think of the, the psalm. It's uh, Psalm 147. It's the last verse of the psalm. We pray in the office. No invasion solitaire terror only not see me. Which means he has not done my manner to every nation. And I think we can say he hasn't done my manner to every family. To have uh, not just one religious, but multiple religious in the family. So it's a great blessing for a family. And uh, I'm sure the parents know that it's not enough just to give your children to God. You have to continue to pray for them with their perseverance and sanctification. But it is a great blessing for a family, and we help one another. Religious obtain graces for the members of the family, and the family members pray for their religious sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, for their perseverance and sanctification, knowing that they benefit from their life of religion. Let us all pray for more vocations. We desperately need vocations, especially in this age, because the religious, primarily, especially sisters and brothers, priests have their particular role to perform, but religious sisters and brothers, their primary role is to earn graces for the conversion of sinners, for this, the successful work of the priests, for the salvation of souls. And we certainly need more individuals doing that. Praying for these needs, let us pray for more